In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the choose action to define decision logic in your automation without needing scripts. And we're going to talk about how to identify what triggered an automation when you have multiple triggers. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? Welcome to Slacker Labs. If this is your first time here, my name is Jeff and here at Slacker Labs we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant, Smart Home Tech, and Home Automation Gear. If you've been using Home Assistant for some time now, you already know that the speed at which we're seeing improvements has really started to take off. Just this year alone we've seen a lot of great features that really help improve the Home Assistant journey for both the beginners and for those of us just trying to feed our automation obsession. Or is it a kink? Maybe we should just call it a habit. One of the reasons that makes Home Assistant an awesome platform is its choose your own adventure take on building a smart home. And while you can do a lot more if you're willing to get under the hood and sling some code, a lot of that is starting to make its way to the UI. One of the things added this year was the choose action as an option for automations. I think it was added back in version .113. Basically, the choose action is like an if-then statement right in your automation. It allows you to add complex decision logic without needing to write extra scripts or even writing if-then statements in your YAML. And you can add a default option which defines what happens when none of your conditions are met. So I wanted to walk you through how to use this action in some of my automations. So let's jump over to my setup and take a look. In this automation, I have the lights under my cabinet turn on when there's motion in the kitchen. Since I want the lighting slightly different depending on whether it's the middle of the night or the evening or early morning, I call two scripts and let them decide based on the time of day which lighting should be on. These scripts are in my lighting package. And they both contain a condition to check to see that the sun is below the horizon. Since I don't have a LUX sensor, this is my proxy sensor for whether it's dark enough for the lights. And then I have a condition for the time of day. If it's between 5.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. and the sun is down, I just turn the normal lights on. But if it's between 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m., I activate a scene that sets the lights at a diminished level. Then after 18 minutes, I just turn the lights off, just to make sure that the lights aren't on all night. So let's use the choose action to move this logic over to the automation itself. First, let's move the condition for the sun out of the scripts and into the automation itself, since both of the choices have the condition that the sun has to be below the horizon. Then we'll replace the first script action with choose. Our condition here is the if option of our decision logic. If the time is between 5.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m., then we do an action. In this case, activate the scene normal kitchen lighting. The next option or path is if the time is between 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. then activate the scene diminished kitchen lighting. Then we'll add a delay of 18 minutes then activate the scene kitchen off. And now we'll delete the last script and save. That's a pretty straightforward example. One trigger, and based on current conditions, your automation can choose one of two paths. But what happens if you have an automation with multiple triggers and your path depends on what triggered the automation? If you've seen my previous video on how I've set up my presence detection, you will have already seen this script, family has arrived. Essentially, this is looking to see whether or not any of my presence detection setup detects someone has arrived and then it activates a family is home script that does some basic stuff, disarm security and stuff like that. However, I also have two automations that live over in my presence package that define what happens when specific people arrive. So when I arrive, then I fire off a script that sets my destination. I have a sensor for that, that I've been playing around with something. I fire the script to turn on the driveway lighting so if it's dark, the driveway lighting comes on, and then I disabled travel monitors. I have one almost identical to that for cat as well that does a lot of the same things. And as you can see, this has the family as home script in it as well. So I have a lot of duplication here. 
and I think I can clean this up using the choose action. Over in the script, we're going to replace this sensor or the trigger for the group. This one here that I do the group.family, we're going to change it to a zone sensor and I'm going to set it for me. Then I'm going to duplicate that just to make it super easy to modify and I will just modify one for Catherine. This way, this automation now triggers for both of us when we arrive. We're gonna delete this condition because it's actually in our family as home script. And we're gonna leave our family as home here. So next up, we're gonna add an action for our choose. We'll set the action type to choose. And for our if condition, we're gonna use a template. And we're gonna set the value to trigger dot to underscore state dot attributes dot friendly underscore name equals Jeffrey. Now what this does is it will look to see what triggered this automation. So if my person triggers this automation, then this condition will be met. This is a really easy way of identifying what triggered your automation so that you can separate your triggers and take different action based on your triggers. And so now we'll set the actions. The first one up is just calling my destination script that sets a sensor that determines what my destination is. I've been testing to see if I can get Home Assistant to actually understand where I'm going when I leave and set that so that if anybody wanted to know what my destination was, Home Assistant would know. The next one is simply turning off my travel monitor, which would get turned on anytime I leave my work zone. Next, we'll add an option for cat, and we'll use the same template sensor here as well. We'll set it to see if she was the one that triggered this automation. And then we will add a service call to turn off the input boolean for her travel monitor as well. The last thing to do here is then to add at the very bottom an action that calls the script that turns on the driveway lighting. Again, this script gets fired anytime somebody arrives home, but it has a condition in there to check to see if the sun is below the horizon, and if it is, it turns on the driveway lights. The only thing we have now left to do is to go back and comment out those other automations. So we'll flip back over to my presence package where those live. We'll just scroll down to these guys and we will comment them out so that they don't run and we don't have duplicates. Now, I'm not sure if there's any performance benefits over using your scripts to do the decision logic or using this choose action. I haven't noticed any noticeable difference between the two methods. Although, honestly, I'm not really focused on the performance as much as whether or not the home automation is actually doing what I'm asking it to do. But the choose option does give you another path to adding decision logic to your automations, and that's a good thing. If you like this video, give me the finger by clicking that thumbs up so I know it wasn't all bad, and consider subscribing to my channel for more home automation content. It's free, which means you don't have to give up that prized subscription to your favorite channel just to add mine. If I got something wrong or you have questions about something I said, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitter at TheJeffreyStone. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, automate the boring stuff.